Iron Menace is Dorney Park's new for 2024 Bolger and Mabillard dive coaster. It is the park's first new original roller coaster in nearly 20 years. The last new original roller coaster the park received was Hydra the Revenge in 2005. Dorney Park needed a coaster like this, a first of its kind roller coaster in the Northeast. Iron Menace is a great roller coaster and a great fit at Dorney Park. This is our full length, in depth review of Iron Menace and our comments about what you can expect when you go to Dorney Park to ride this coaster. Now let's get into the review. Iron Menace is one of the first roller coasters you will see when you arrive at Dorney Park. Because the entrance to Dorney Park's parking lots go right up alongside the coaster, you get pretty close to Iron Menace before you even enter the park. The sight of the Beyond Vertical Drop and Tilted Loop is something to behold. While you will also see other roller coasters in the park skyline, Iron Menace is the focal point. It is actually a great way to get excited for your day at the park, but Iron Menace is located towards the far end of the park, so it is a hike to get to from the park's front entrance. That hike is worth it. As soon as you cross the Zephyr Railroad tracks, you get immediately immersed in Iron Menace's theme. More on that in a moment. To accompany the new coaster, Dorney Park themed that area of the park as the Steel Yard. As soon as you enter the Steel Yard, you hear ominous industrial music and see some rusted industrial equipment. When you go further into this section of the park, you get striking visuals of Iron Menace and trains plunging down the first drop and flying through the coaster's massive first inversion. This is an incredible walk-up experience. You can get incredibly close to the ride, too. As you make your way to the entrance to the ride's queue, you walk past the ride's large marquee displaying the ride name. This marquee looks great, especially with its laid brick base holding up the name. To enter the queue, you walk further down past the coaster's lift hill and into the entrance queue. And this entrance queue is extremely well themed and captures the ride overall theme. Iron Menace and the surrounding steel yard section of the park is themed to Scottish businessman Hiram S. McTavish's greed-motivated hauler named the Iron Menace, and the mystery regarding McTavish's sudden disappearance and the closure of his steel mill. As you make your way through the queue, you walk through McTavish's abandoned mill and pass some of the strongest theming on any Cedar Fair roller coaster. Dorney Park brought in actual tanks from old steel mills and placed them in the queue. The park also made the railing in the queue under next to and in the station look like actual rusted metal which is a great touch as you make your way through the ride's extended queue you will see a van surveilling for paranormal activity throughout the queue you also get amazing visuals of the coaster in action you then climb some stairs up into the station where you see some more steel mill theming and one of iron menaces two three row 21 passenger trains these trains look nice and they have B&M's newer vest restraints which you can find on newer coasters like Banshee at Kings Island. And those vest restraints feel comfortable and are great, especially during the ride. Once you have boarded your train, secured your vest restraints, and cleared dispatch, you make your way out of the station and directly up the lift hill to begin your ride. As you climb the lift hill, you hear some audio fitting in with the Iron Menace theme. And as you reach the top of the lift hill, you will proceed directly into the holding brake for the first drop instead of entering a panoramic turnaround before the first drop like the ones on other dive coasters like Griffin. And that is what stands out about Iron Menace. This coaster does not waste any track. Another thing about Iron Menace's first drop is that the vest restraints add to the pre-drop dangling feeling. The vest restraints have some give to them, so if you are sitting in the front row, you will lean just a little more forward before the holding brake releases. After a 5 second hold, the holding brake releases and you dive down Iron Menace's 152 foot 95 degree first drop. You then fly up into a massive Immelman, which pulls some good forces and delivers a slight motor airtime pop coming out of it. Off the Immelman, you go into a large barrel roll, which offers a good amount of hang time, especially for those sitting in the front row. You then enter the tilted loop, which pulls some good positive G-forces, followed by a whippy corkscrew. As you come out of that corkscrew, you enter a short leftward banked helix, followed by the final brake run, thus completing your ride. From the moment you enter the steel yard to the time you get off the ride, Iron Menace is a full experience. At certain points during the walk up to the ride and its station, you really get the impression of what an abandoned mill looks like. The fact that the queue has tanks and equipment from old mills in the surrounding area is a great touch. 
but Iron Menace is a short ride. As a narrow track B&M dive, it does not have a mid-course break run or second drop. Nonetheless, that lack of a mid-course break run helps Iron Menace, as it has great pacing. From first drop to final break run, Iron Menace is non-stop action. It simply flies from element to element. Iron Menace pulls some great forces. The climb into the Immelman and that tilted loop are forceful. There is also great hang time. Iron Menace is a great coaster, but the ride definitely offers a different experience depending on where you sit. There is a noticeable difference between a front row and a back row ride. Despite having great pacing, Iron Menace's first row rides are much more superior than its back row rides. For our first ride on Iron Menace, we sat in the back row. While the back row gave some great floater airtime off the first drop, there is a noticeable jitter throughout the layout. But that jitter only exists in the back row, as Iron Menace tracks its layout quite nicely and is definitely a smooth ride. But this coaster shines in the front row. Every element hits, especially given its smoothness. That extra give you get from the Vest Restraints before the first drop also shines in the front row, only adding to the much more superior front row ride experience. Aside from the differences in the front and back row rides, Iron Menace's Helix has a strange entry and exit. Regardless of where you sit, you might notice a little different profiling. This profiling does not cause jolts or jitteriness, and there are no potholes. They are just strange moments. But Dorney Park did a great job with this roller coaster. The park really needed something like this. While it is a shorter ride, Iron Menace delivers an exciting ride experience, which is nonstop from start to finish. Overall, Iron Menace is a great roller coaster and might possibly be a top three roller coaster in the park. A front row ride is amazing, packed with good forces and pacing. It also offers some insane visuals throughout the park. For a final score, we give Iron Menace an 8 out of 10. It delivers a fun and enjoyable ride experience coupled with some great theming. We can definitely see this coaster becoming a huge fan favorite among park guests given its first for the region ride experience. So let us know in the comments below if you have ridden Iron Menace at Dorney Park and if so, what you think about it. And if you enjoyed this video or are new to the channel, please like and subscribe for more coaster content like this. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more coaster reviews and amusement park content from Coaster Adventures and we hope to see you in the next one.